Okay, so um, so we've been studying about um, impartation, anointing of God, which is the presence and power of God, and what the anointing of God accomplishes uh, in a person and through a person, and what the anointing of God um, uh, can do in a corporate body, which is uh, you know what we can call as a corporate anointing, um, and so um, you know all that we have seen. So just a few more thoughts on. Um, the impartation, you know, the question that Abu Bakr asked about, um, you know, can I pray, can I lay hands, and can uh, the anointing of God, you know, the way he's working in my life, can that be transferred, okay? So uh, let's look at that. I just want to, um, well, let me just project the notes, okay? Okay, so... Um, yeah so let's look at uh, you know a couple of scriptures here let's say Romans 1 verse 11 um, 1st Timothy chapter 4 14 and 2nd uh, second, um, Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6 Okay, I'll just put it on the chat one second. Okay. Um, so there you go. Let's just read through before we uh, get into the notes. So Romans chapter 1 and verse 11, Paul says, for I, for I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. Okay. So the word impartation or impart uh, really refers to a transfer, a spiritual transfer of a gift or uh, an empowering of the Holy Spirit, right? So we see this, uh, we saw this in the Old Testament, we see in the New Testament as well. So the word impart actually refers to that. So here Paul says that, uh, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. Okay. Uh, let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 14. says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So there was something that was given, that was, uh, you know, brought into Timothy's life or in his spirit, uh, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Okay. Then we move on to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6, where it um, says, Therefore, I remind you, to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Okay, so individual, corporately, people laid hands. And uh, we know that uh, the gifts come from God. We know that uh, the, the, the word anointing itself talks about the work and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So it is he who does the impartation or it is he who actually uh, you know, puts those things or gives uh, uh, the gifts and brings it into our lives, right? But he chooses to use human vessels either as a group or as uh, an individual and he brings it, right? Uh, where maybe it's a simple laying on of hands of praying or maybe it's a formal, uh, you know, a dedication like we see in terms of uh, Timothy's life, right? It was laying on of hands of the eldership. Probably, you know, uh, they did that uh, when they appointed him as uh, as a leader in the church at Ephesus. Right. So, so this is something that we see here. Um, so, uh, so we see that imp this is uh, this is scriptural. We see uh, impartation being mentioned in scripture. Okay. Um, here are some things that we need to keep in mind when it comes to impartation. Okay, uh, and let me just let's go through that. Uh, okay, now this uh, this is in a different handout which I'll upload it after we 
finish the class. Uh, I'll put it on the stream and you can go through it. Uh, this is from a sermon um, that was um, uh, that was preached by Pastor Ashish many years ago. Um, so, yeah. So first thing that we need to understand is that impartation is always aligned to God's call and assignment. Okay, so which means that uh, uh, God has called you to be, a, let's say, a pastor or a teacher. And uh, so the impartation is to actually strengthen the ministry gift. Okay, let's say God has called you to be a called you to be a pastor. Or he, you know, so the impartation is to strengthen what goes into carrying out that role as a pastor. Right? So, um, so Paul actually is reminding him, hey, you know, you, you are taking care of, you're a spiritual leader in Ephesus, he's telling Timothy, and you're taking care of all these people there. Don't neglect the gift which was given to you. You know, there's something that was brought into your life to strengthen that role, right? So we see that impartation is aligned to the God's will and God's call and the assignment on our life. Okay, so if it is in the area of worship, if it's in the area of whatever, you know, um, the, the impartation of the anointing is to is to empower that area, okay, so that you can serve even more effectively. Right? Uh, impartation takes place in a measure. You know, we see that when when it comes to the seventy uh, elders. Now, it's in a they they took care of the responsibility of leading. Uh, but they did not become a prophet like Moses. Same also with Joshua. You know, he did not become a um, in the manner of Moses, but uh, you know it came as a, in a measure. Right? Um, so, so we need to understand that it comes as a measure and one aspect of uh, you know how God is working through that person, maybe, and which is also aligned to the uh, an, uh, aligned to the call of God, assignment that God has for you, now that would be empowered by the Holy Spirit, right? Then we also understand, point number three, we also understand that whatever we receive through the impartation of the Holy Spirit, that should not be neglected or ignored, but it has to be nurtured and it has to be developed so that it can grow to grow to be effective. Right? So we can grow an effective, uh, an effectively minister in that. So uh, a classic example is again the scriptures that we saw just now, First Timothy four fourteen and Second Timothy one six, where Paul is reminding Timothy and he's saying, "Hey, this is what was transferred into your life, imparted into your life, but do not neglect it." So we see that they, you know, we we can get prayed over, uh, we can God will. Uh, you know, anoint us, and there's a measure of uh, what we can do through that anointing. Uh, but it's our human responsibility to to walk in it, to nurture that, to steward that. Right? It depends on us. It de depends on our uh, responsibility to to walk in it, to hunger after God, to to develop that, to keep serving in that area, so that. We can sharpen that and become more and more effective. Okay, so if we neglect it or if we ignore it, then we see that uh, you know that is not effective. You know, we're not bearing fruit as we should be in that area. Okay. Um, also, the truth is that we can grow beyond what was imparted because we can grow in it. Right? Maybe there's a measure that was important, but we can definitely grow beyond. Uh, what was imparted simply because we can grow in that anointing. Like we can continue to ask God, we can continue to be filled with this uh, presence. We can ask God to fill us um, and we can be faithful in that area and we can grow in it. So whether it's an anointing to be a pastor, anointing to be a teacher, anointing to be a worship leader, uh, anointing to be, uh, you know, everything, you know, to be a leader, to be a uh, to be a compassionate, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know, person who, who can be generous and compassionate, um, we can grow in that area, right? It's also true that, well, we can receive impartation from more than one minister of God, right? Paul 
uh, writes to the Corinthian church and he's, he, he and uh, you know he is uh, is recommending Apollos to them and uh, we see that he writes about other ministers of God like Titus and and, and so on so um, and they minister just like Paul did right Paul himself uh, mentions that they minister as as I also do. You know, he's a minister of God as I as I am, which means that uh, they also ministered in similar manner. So, uh, and we can receive uh, impartation from more than one minister of God, and that is why, you know, the ministers are there in the body of Christ. That is why, and it is the body. So we receive from one another. Okay. Um, what really determines um, what we receive is our hunger for God, okay, uh, our hunger level, because uh, when we uh, thirst and hunger and desire, you know, hunger and thirst, just figuratively talking about uh, our, uh, our desire for God, our desire for his work in our lives, right, when we do that, um, the Lord promises that he will, he will respond, right, uh, when we when we study about the presence of God, we see that He will pour out water uh, on one who is you know thirsty, um, and uh, He will cause He will cause that thing to um, He'll cause the whole environment to change, right? The the river to flow and the desert to bloom and blossom and so on. So He will pour out water as one who is thirsting, uh, as like a dry land, right? So. Our hunger and thirst for God, our desire for God is, is important or it's necessary right, for what we receive. So which means the, um, you know, the greater the hunger, the greater the desire, the greater the um, yieldedness um, you know, we re is required to receive from him. Now, when, we, when we read, look at the, um, uh, the parable of the sower, and particularly when we look at Mark chapter 4, okay, we see Mark chapter 4. And, um, well, this is actually talking about revelation and receiving. Um, same would apply, Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that what is the measure? What is the size of the vessel, the measure that you're using in order to hear, you know, in order to receive, right? With the same measure you use, with the same size of the vessel that you come and bring, the same will be given. It will be measured to you. And it's in the area of hearing and receiving uh, from God. Like take heed what you hear with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Right? So oh, that's the promise, which means that when we hunger and thirst for more of God, we will receive more. Okay. Um, and also, it is aligned to God's call on our life, God's assignment on our life. You know. So that's uh, that's the thing, because uh, like we might be very very taken up by oh, maybe some kind of ministry and some some spiritual gift, you know, or, or ministry gift, sorry, not spiritual gift. Spiritual gifts are for everyone. Uh, some ministry gift, like maybe like a prophetic office. Uh, whereas you might be called for something else, maybe like a teacher, maybe um, you are called to ground people in the word and you are, you know, you are, uh, you are the one who gets deep revelation from the word every time you sit you know that's how the gift operates and you're able to communicate very effectively and in simple words the deep truths and the complex truths that are there in the word of god you're gifted to be a teacher and that's your calling and gifting and assignment but whereas let's say you're so taken up by the prophetic office that you desiring to be in you know but the fact is that the impartation is will be the impartation is aligned to the call of God on your life. That does not mean that we cannot desire to prophesy. We can be, you know, and that is something that we need to do. Like Paul says that, I, I, you know, my desire is that all can, will prophesy. 
um, that all spoke in tongues, right? So that is something that we can desire. But the ministry office, which is which is really the call, the assignment of God on our lives, you know, uh, that is something. Uh, the impartation is tied to, right, in order to, um, in order to um, strengthen that, right? Okay. Impartation also takes place through association and honor, which means that uh, you know, when we say association and honor, we are, uh, you know, we are closely associated with someone. We are receiving teaching from someone. We are, uh, and honor specifically because you know only when we respect and honor. Can we actually receive? You, know, you think about it. If uh, let's say you're offended with someone, and uh, so therefore you cannot, you know, when you're offended, you cannot respect or honor that person, you know, from your heart, really. And when you're offended, and we you can't respect and honor that person from your heart, which means that your heart is closed to whatever that person is teaching or sharing, or at least some aspect of it. Right, you because simply because of the offense. So without honor, without respect, one cannot receive. Right, you cannot receive the words. You cannot receive from that person because deep within you are actually resisting. Deep within you are actually close, saying, uh, you know, I don't really, uh, I don't really want to listen to what you have to say because uh, I don't respect you. The reason could be this, you know, X, Y, Z, because you you are that, 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 right? So, so the thing is, we are not able to receive. So, honor again is important. Uh, honor in the right manner again. Coming back to that, you know, it's not placing, it's not idol worship, it's not celebrity worship, it's not uh, you know treating a person that way. Because that is really harmful for the body of Christ. Like we see in the Corinthian church, people are saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. What? So that was actually dividing them. And God doesn't want that. God wants us to be in a place of one accord, one heart and one mind, uh, without striving, without bringing it, without having divisions and so on. Right? Okay. Uh, importation can take place remotely. Uh, you know, without laying hands, we see that example. Moses, elders, um, the, also, uh, you know, in the New Testament, also we see that laying of hands not not necessary, but it's, it's scriptural. Uh, God can do it sovereignly, remotely as well. Uh, it can be through, you know, the, the messages a person has recorded. It can be through books a person has written and. And God can bring about, you know, you know, as we are pursuing, let's say you're pursuing a, uh, you know, a prophetic ministry or a teaching ministry, you know, God can impart that anointing, uh, which is empowering the work of the Spirit. And, you know, He can do it sovereignly, right? As we are learning more, and God can use the teachings of a person to, to bring about that, to empower us in that area. Okay. Importation cannot be purchased with money, so we see, uh, you know, some uh, examples of that. Acts chapter eight, Samaria, there's a revival happening there. Philip goes there, and a lot of people come to know the Lord. Well, there was this uh, sorcerer called Simon, and he he sees Peter and John laying hands on people and uh, they receive the Holy Spirit. And so he says, you know, I'll give you money. Give me this power. So that when I lay hands, same thing happens. I, that I may give, people may receive the Holy Spirit when I lay hands. And uh, Peter has some strong words to share with Simon, right? So we see that, uh, you know, that's, a, that's definitely a no-no. Oh, that's a caution, word of caution. So, so the thing is that when the minister of God, you know, operates in such a manner, saying, you know, you you give this offering or you you give this contribution, and then this will operate in your life, you know, or some, the, the the word used is sowing a seed, 
for the anointing. Um, I know that's you know sometimes very very commonplace in the charismatic uh, Christianity and you know church world, but the thing is we actually give to God. You know, we're not sowing into the anointing or sowing into the ministry. We are sowing into the kingdom of God. We're sowing to to Him, and He's the one who gives the increase. You know what we see in Second Corinthians about Second Corinthians nine about giving. It's not. To a person, it's not to uh, you know an anointing. Well, uh, that is not scriptural, right? So, it's anointing cannot be purchased, or that cannot be a transaction. It cannot be something that you you know you give financially and then you receive something. You hunger and thirst after God, and God gives you. Well, God might give it through a person, through a minister. Uh, but when, when as ministers of God, when we, when we minister in this manner, then it becomes, then we are actually stepping out of line. So it's it's a word of caution. Right? Um, then the other thing that we see is about the double portion. Okay, a double portion about uh, uh, a double anointing, a double portion of that. And we see that in uh, Elijah, uh, Elisha. Elisha actually uh, wanted a double portion of Elijah's anointing. The way God worked in Elisha, Elijah's life, <coughs> excuse me, he, uh, Elisha wanted the same thing and more. Right? He said, I want a double of that. And uh, But the thing is that Elijah cannot give. Right? Only God can give. Even the extent to which God was using a person, person A, God can only give. It is not this person. It is not this person or it's not that person's or minister of God's uh, prerogative or ability to give that. It is God, his working, uh, and it is his, uh, his desire and his will that actually causes the impartation. Right, transfer of anointing and the double portion it comes from God okay it cannot come from man so there also you know um, I think a lot of a lot of damage has been done you know you'll receive a double portion you give double of this and then you'll receive a double portion you know, that's not scriptural uh, again impartation can take place across can take place sorry across generations um, John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah meaning that he came in that manner uh, uh, like the way in which Elijah worked, or uh, if you actually study, you see that one aspect of it—he turned the hearts of the fathers back to the children, right? So, so that was the aspect which, uh, I mean, uh, causing that repentance. Um, so, but impartation can take place can take place across the uh, across generations. You know, the manner in which God worked in a certain minister of God's life, you know, the way he worked in William Carey, you know, the way he worked in, you know, Billy Graham, you know, God can work in, in a person's life, you know, in the present generation. And uh, the, we can actually hunger and desire, Lord, the way you work in Smith with the lives and life and ministry, Lord, you do the same thing, right? So that's something that God can do. God can raise up a man, woman and uh, place the same kind of assignment and call uh, and use right? but our focus is on the lord right? um, our focus is on him and uh, uh, we are rooted and grounded in the word of god okay so that's about the uh, impartation and right? the transfer of the anointing um that we just wanted to share Okay, here are some some cautions. Okay, so, uh, let's look at some of these. Okay, and then we'll probably discuss uh, with some questions. Okay, so just because a person is called, anointed, and gifted, and manifests signs and wonders, does not mean that they are perfect. Okay, it does not mean that they are incapable of error or they are infallible. Okay, um, you know. So the thing is that. We see in history as well that there were people who got carried away because of the powerful way in which God used them, got into error because they were not, either they did not have the fear of God 
in them or they were not grounded in the word right so they were not grounded in proper doctrine so they they, they were used by god powerfully right in the initial days and they they moved into error and so on so you see that that is possible okay so uh, so always we need to be discerning we need to we need to of course we need to recognize and honor god's anointing through a human vessel right but we need to evaluate the teaching and the preaching um based on the word of god and uh, we need to evaluate it based on the you know discernment the spirit of god gives so uh and always look at the fruit of their lives their lifestyle and so on right so we need to do that okay um okay this is something that we looked at you know when people start merchandising the anointing or using it for uh you know for financial gain for their own needs um then that is wrong uh yes god does use uh, when it comes to material things you know god does you know, the rod of aaron or the rod of um, moses um you know the brazen serpent which was raised up well these were things that god used right um but if you you know start using that or start worshiping that or start uh you know looking at that as a holy thing or even merchandising that okay, here's a piece of the rock that moses you know the water came out of uh it has you know it has the anointing or it has the power then that would be wrong and uh, um you know when you put a price on it then it would be it would be wrong right to so all kinds of things do happen uh but we don't have to we who you know when we know the truth we don't have to do that uh we don't have to have that as a role model well we can learn from people we can learn definitely but not everything may be right right in the manner of ministering uh there could be wonderful sincere men and women of god maybe in this aspect you know they are not correct uh we can they're definitely receive from their ministry but these are some things that we can avoid like we don't have to do that okay so look for the proof the fruit not just for performance um well when we say fruit so this is what the lord jesus said in you know, matthew chapter 7 verse 16 you will know them by their fruits okay even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit okay so verse 20 therefore by their fruits you will know them okay and he's specifically talking about false prophets um and how this is one of the indicators of knowing who is false and who is true um so he's talking about people who intently come uh you know intentionally come in clothed as sheep you know in sheep's clothing but inwardly their motives are different they are actually people who want to take from your life okay who want to actually bring and you know, take from your life and literally devour you everything that you have right he's talking about such kind of people and he's saying you know their lifestyle they are the 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 character and life will actually be the deciding factor okay so here are some things you know to see uh to to actually look at the fruit and uh, here are some things here are some indicators okay is the lord jesus glorified and exalted because the lord jesus when he is talking about the work of the spirit uh john chapter 16 says that the spirit will always exalt him exalt jesus so is the lord glorified is he exalted secondly our believers life okay the ones who are being ministered to uh, are their lives transformed or are they still living a different kind of life um uh, and living uh you know a carnal life rather than a life of christ likeness of being christ like right are their life transformed are they growing in christ likeness um are the believers being equipped for ministry is the body of christ edified and built up is the body of christ brought to unity of the faith you know these are 
uh, several indicators because we see this in Ephesians chapter 4 when it talks about the ministry gifts like the pastor, evangelist, prophet, teacher, the apostle. And it says uh, this will be the ministry. Or this is the kind of ministry that they will do. So, you know, all these are indicators, right? So, um, so the thing is to look for the fruit and not be just moved by the excitement or, you know, the entertainment factor um, of the of the message and the ministry, right? So look for the fruit. Okay. Um, the other thing is not to boast in men. This is for us, you know, as we uh, as we even receive from the ministers of God, receive from the, you know, from the anointing, um, or receive the anointing, uh, the impartation through them, that we don't boast in men, but our focus is on God. Okay, so very clearly in uh, 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about that. You know, chapter 1, people are saying, you know, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, uh, I am of Christ, I'm of Apollos. He says, you know, you are being carnal. You know, who are we? He's talking about himself. He's talking about Peter. He's talking about Apollos. We are just ministers. Um, so let no one boast in men. Now it's now it's uh, it's 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 a difficult thing in the sense. Um, well, God used this man of God. God used this woman, you know, very powerfully to minister in our lives. Right? And to that, we are grateful. Uh, but the thing is, uh, of, to keep our focus on God, who ministered to us ultimately, right? and, and not really uh, boast in the vessel whom God used. Right? We can honor, we can testify, we can definitely, you know, we, we, we need to honor the man or the woman of God. We need to respect the man or the woman of God. Okay. But, um, but really, our boasting is reserved for God. And uh, only God is to be glorified and exalted and not the or not the vessel or not the minister. Right. Okay. Um, several other questions, you know, what do you need in your life? Is it Jesus or an anointed minister of God? Okay. Um, because sometimes people take pride in saying I'm I'm connected. To this minister of God, or I am, you know, I'm connected to this ministry, or I'm part of this ministry and recommended by this ministry, and so on. So we, you know, draw our whatever self worth or um, you know, identity from that. But really, we just need Jesus. Okay, okay. So he, those are few uh, do's and don'ts when it comes to anointing, when it comes to uh, impartation. Uh, and so on. Okay. So, yeah. So just wanted to ask uh, if there are any uh, questions, if there's anything that, um, anything that we can discuss uh, before we move on. Any questions at all? Are you sure? No questions. Okay. Okay. If you if you do have questions, we can always discuss. Like you can always put it on the stream, or you can, and we can always discuss that. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's move on to the next uh, topic, which is about the names and symbols of the Holy Spirit. Okay, names and symbols of the Holy Spirit. Um, and with that, we will actually uh, come to a close of uh, this course. We're looking at names and symbols of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, names are, or, or in other words, titles, right, which are given to the Holy Spirit. Names. So this, uh, the, the names are given. It has a purpose. The, you know, the Spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit. Okay, 
is called the um, but which means talks about uh, the holiness which is the hallmark of his characteristic nature right so he is called the holy spirit so therefore this title or the name holy um, refers to the nature of god the holy spirit it refers to the his characteristic which is holy but similarly we see that there are several names which are attributed which are which, by which the holy spirit is referred to okay so which means that there is um, that this title points to a facet of the character okay or the nature okay um, so let's look at a few of those titles okay um, let me just put up the notes again okay or maybe uh, you know some of you can share you know what do you recall as the names of the holy spirit you know what are the names of the spirit that you can uh, you can you know you've come across anyone you can put it on the chat or you can just uh, share as well the names of the spirit of god helper okay is called the helper which is a title he is the one who is a guide he will guide us into all truth yes um so the guide is not really a title but yes is guiding is what he does counselor it's true spirit of knowledge yes spirit of supplication is a comforter spirit of truth yes um what else anyone else what else is the holy spirit referred to or called as a divine authority okay um can you give the reference uh, robert i mean i i don't i don't think i've seen that but probably i missed it out but is he called the spirit of divine authority um uh, i'm not sure the spirit of wisdom and an understanding of course yeah so i uh, yeah, robert you, you can just let me know what is it um, you know uh, specifically to the holy spirit if he is called anything like that um yeah spirit of the lord and so on yeah so we see there's a you know there's, there's many titles okay uh, that these referred to and uh, uh, the reason he is called that is because he does something in line with the title like he carries out a function in line with the title okay so let's uh, we've we've actually looked at uh, some of those but um, let's look at uh, some more okay uh, maybe these some of these things you're already aware of uh, but it's good for us to you know look through this right okay so uh, the names provide insight into the will the ways and the work of the holy spirit Okay, so he's called the Holy Spirit, meaning that uh, he's the third person. He's holy. Um, so we're going to look at some other titles here. Okay, it's called the Spirit of God. Okay, the Spirit of God, and every time the this title appears, we see that. Uh, the title spirit of god is associated with creation it's associated with power you know it's associated with um, you know calling forth uh, some things about the future okay um uh, i'm not going to go through all the references but we look at one the first one uh, you know genesis 1 and verse 2 um talks about the spirit of god hovering or brooding uh over the earth 
the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of god was hovering over the face of the waters so um, so as things were created or even before god could the father could pronounce uh, various things into creation we see the spirit of god hovering over the waters right uh, so we see the spirit of god linked with creation right in the beginning eternal um, in the eternal past spirit of god being there hovering and bringing about um, with his power uh, bringing about the creative work right okay then we see the title spirit of the lord okay the spirit of the lord now this is uh, in the new testament it's used in second corinthians 3 verse 17 um let me just read that out 3 verse 17 says now the spirit now the lord is the, the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is um there is uh, there is liberty or there is freedom okay so here again it uh, when we see that it's used for the working of the spirit of god whether it's liberating whether it's uh, you know uh, bringing about a certain sense of freedom and and a victory uh, causing a person to be liberated and to be free right so we see that um, that is being uh, wherever the spirit of the lord title is used uh, or the name is used that is what he brings about freedom right um so the thing is that uh, you know again um, for us to be mindful of the fact that uh, when we experience a certain sense of freedom in the spirit now that is a manifestation or a tangible uh, display of the work of the holy spirit right so you know where there was certain when i say freedom you know freedom from kind of a heaviness freedom kind of some kind of oppression and there's a increasing freedom and confidence um even freedom to minister right freedom to minister and in worship um prayer you know, there is that increasing freedom that we are experiencing and we are there is increasing boldness and courage that we get uh, to minister you know that's an indicator of the presence of the holy spirit right when you say you know suddenly just felt free um you know many times during the worship a corporate worship or even personal worship you know, just experience that freedom people suddenly you know experiencing that freedom to worship to express their heartfelt adoration and love and and worship to god and we know that that is the work of the holy spirit because he is the spirit of the lord and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty he brings that right so we we know that he's ministering and is bringing that and he's also referred to as my spirit right uh, clearly uh, again talking about uh, 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 the father who's addressing as my spirit and we see that in um, in these uh, texts in the old testament uh, it's called the spirit of the living god uh, second corinthians 3 and verse 3 clearly you are an epistle of christ ministered by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god not on tablets of stone but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart so referring to the the work that he brings about and uh, which is in this case you know we know that he's a living god that he's alive and he brings about life um so his ministry also bringing about life or that change from death to life so here you know second corinthians 3 3 talks about how the holy spirit ministered to the hearts of people uh, the corinthian church and is you know paul before that he says you are our epistle written in our hearts and uh, and ministered by the holy spirit right written not with ink ministered uh, by us written not with ink but by the spirit of the living god so he did a deep work in their hearts he brought their spirit to life and he's referred to as the spirit of the 
living God. Okay. Uh, he's also referred to as Spirit of Jesus Christ okay, in the New Testament. Philipp, uh, let's look at Philippians 1 and uh, 19. Philippians 1, 19. Um, just a second. Yeah. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So Paul is in prison and, uh, you know, he's saying that um, uh, something that's tied up to his deliverance. And what is that? He says, through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. And uh, here he's referred to as, uh, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Spirit of Jesus Christ. He's also refer referred to as the Spirit of his Son, Galatians 4. Um, and uh, let's look at verse 6. Okay. Galatians 4 verse 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out about a father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Okay. So the spirit of the son, spirit of the Lord Jesus, uh, refer uh, the Holy Spirit called as the Spirit of the Son, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Right. So that's he's also called the Spirit of Adoption, Romans chapter 8. So the same thing here, he's bringing us into that. We are called the co-heir of Christ, and uh, he's bringing us into that family and uh, is testifying to our hearts that we are indeed sons and daughters of God, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Okay, so he's the. Uh, it's wonderful, right? The, the spirit of the son, or spirit of his son, uh, which means father, son, and the Holy Spirit, working in our hearts and bringing us into sonship. You know, bringing us into that place of adoption as sons and daughters of God, by whom we cry out, or through whom we cry out, our Father. Okay, um, Romans eight fourteen fifteen again. Uh, the fact that we are we are adopted as sons and daughters and the spirit of God bringing us into that place of adoption. So he is called the spirit of adoption. Okay. He is also called the spirit of glory. Okay. First Peter four and verse 14 um, and Isaiah 40, I'm sorry, Isaiah four and verse five um, is called the spirit of glory. Okay. So glory refers to the, the who God is and what God does. Um, and um, so we see that the Holy Spirit is referred to as, as a spirit of glory quite aptly because um, he brings about uh, who God is and what uh, God does. Okay, so um, so we see all this mentioned. Um, you know, uh, these are some of the names that are by which the Holy Spirit is referred to. Okay, so in the next class we will uh, we will go through the rest of the. Um, names and the symbols of the Holy Spirit. Um, and with that, we'll come to a close. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. Thank you. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll meet again next, next week for our concluding class. Okay. And, uh, and be aware of the uh, quizzes that will be released from time to time. You have time till the 26th to finish. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And God bless.